All right. You're here for something very special. Look at all of you. You're all a Twitter with anticipation. So I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Please welcome to the stage Natasha Nagovanlis and Elise Bowman! Could they be more on brand right now? Oh, look at these comfy chairs. Whoa! Oh my goodness. I so like short. this. I'm so glad I wore coveralls today. Mm -hmm. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Dana. Feeling good? Feeling great. How was yesterday for you? Amazing. This has been like so wonderful and, and beautiful. And, and the fact that I can poop in my own home and not in a hotel room in the morning. Before, I thought we'd at least get hometown. two minutes into this panel before <laughs> someone talked about poop. Um, no, this has truly been one of the most special weekends ever. I knew coming in that it was going to be, uh, that it was going to feel different, I think, than other conventions. But, I mean, the fact that we made that thing five years ago, and here we are, and, and seeing people who have made friendships and met their partners through the fandom and... I really think that's the most special thing about this is is the fandom and, and the way that everyone has connected all over the world through this show is amazing. So Yeah, yeah five years feels like a lifetime ago. It truly, truly does. It truly does. Like, we were just watching that sweet video and we were like, oh my God, we were just young little whippersnappers. <laughs> <laughs> it was so janky. <laughs> it's so great. Um, but no, this convention has been so wonderful. And um, yeah, we were even talking about this last night. Like one of my favorite things is that everyone has pronoun pins and everyone's been so welcoming. And we had a great time at trivia last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just been so, so special. And it just feels really comfortable. Yeah, it There's feels no very stress. like I'm like, oh, this is just like we're all hanging out. Yeah, like, that's nice. <laughs> all hanging out with our chosen families. Yeah. It's it's so lovely. Well, also, gonna, oh, oh no no! I just wanted to give means. just I'm, I'm sure it's gonna happen at one point, but I, can we just like give the most massive thank you to everyone who has been volunteering, all the people who put this together. Like yeah. this is it is a. Truly, like such a, a feat to put together a convention, and this first time people who are putting on this convention, it's so organized, it's so um, inclusive, and it, it, I'm so blown away and so grateful for that. So thanks. <laughs> I also want to thank our amazing interpreters from this weekend. Yeah. Thank you so Woo! much. <laughs> So I want to kick things off with a softball question, okay? <laughs> no, at least not literally softball. Not trivia again! <laughs> uh, so yeah, super easy question to answer. Uh, what do you hope Carmilla's legacy will be? Classic, just really light. I wanted to start beat. things off slow and easy. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean by legacy? Like, what, what do we hope? I mean, I hope that in another five years, we're still getting to see all of you and that we're still having new people introduced to Carmilla. Um, but I also hope that the rest of the industry and the rest of the media that we see on screen also catches up to that as well. Because I think part of what makes um, Carmilla so special and why these cons are so important is that there's still not enough representation on screen. Um, but I hope someday it's not this you know, anomaly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I literally just said this, but I do think one of the strongest things about Carmilla is the fact that it can unite people all over the world. And I hope the legacy is that, um, that you guys continue to uh, be such a beautiful support system for each other. I really see it in the way that... Um, 
I feel so far back in this chair. Um, but you guys like lift each other up and are so supportive of each other and everyone's on their own individual journey. But uh, like I've seen a lot of you sort of like grow up over the years and it's really beautiful and like really come into your own. And I think that's so incredible. And, and I see how important you all are to each other. And I think queer community is so vitally important and um, I think that's the legacy that I would like to continue on is like that, um, that sense of community and of chosen family that you've all found in each other. I hope that you continue to like meet up with your friends and your pals all over the world and yeah. That's very sweet. I remember so distinctly my first conversation with, with all of you just they it was like talk they were like a bunch of kids just so happy and excited to be doing this thing and passing around a bowl of chips <laughs> during an interview <laughs> so there's a lot of crunching on the uh, on the recording but like you've grown so much as people like i'm so proud to know you as the women that you are very gay mother thanks <laughs> okay all right we're in a room full of fangirls, fanboys, fan folks. What do you guys really fangirl about? Fleabag. <laughs> Whew. Man, oh man. Just what a sexy time. <laughs> um, I love, loved Fleabag. Um, Natasha? <laughs> It's funny, I also really love Fleabag, and I can't believe it took me so long to watch all of it, but um, I had recently uh, taken a, I didn't share it publicly, but I, I took a video of me re reacting to the last episode of season two, and I was like, nobody told me it was gonna be so emotional, and I was like, if I wasn't so dehydrated and medicated all the time, I'd cry. <laughs> and then it was like a video of me like being like, oh, almost, oh. Uh. I was like, my eyes were like slightly glossy. It was beautiful. Uh, also, Euphoria. I don't know if anyone watched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. One person's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, I really loved Euphoria. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I um, also feel like there's shows that I'm like, this is a beautiful piece of art, but it's sometimes they're so heavy that I don't necessarily <laughs> yeah. want to watch them again. Yeah. Um, I think in terms of like fangirl things that are more genre-y, I really loved Crazy Head. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Oh, yeah, yes. my friend Susan is in it and she's one of the leads and I was devastated that they didn't get a season two. I loved that show, it's so funny. Check it out, it's, it's like very genre but very absurdist mm -hmm. uh, comedy. Um, but I was also just talking about this this morning um, as well about understanding the importance of representation on screen and how um, the first time I saw two women kiss on screen, I think I was in the 10th grade and I was like staying up late, it was like 10.30 on a school night, guys. <laughs> and I was flipping through this like little TV I had in my room and the L word came on and I remember being like, what is this? <laughs> And then completely fangirling over Mia Kirshner, and then I got to meet her a couple of years ago, and it was just this like weird thing where I was like, oh my gosh, like I would have never, 19 year old me who had like a picture of Mia Kirshner like in my room and was like, this is like the acting I want to achieve one day, um, never imagined like being able to, to meet her at an event like sort of as a peer. And, um, but I, I, I f often forget that now because I've been out for so long and we've been part of this, um, community for so long that I often forget like what it was like to be that like lost teenager who was just sort of like I'd wander the village in Montreal by myself like scouring the streets looking for I, I wandered into I think I've said this in an interview before but I wandered into what ended up being an AA meeting but <laughs> there were a bunch of women outside smoking and I was like those look like lesbians <laughs> And I like wandered in and I was like, um, excuse me. I was like, do you know if there are any like youth groups or like support groups? I just want to hear people's coming out stories and I just want to find a sense of community. And, but also how giving people were. Like I ended up just having coffee with this woman who was like, sure, I'll tell you my story. And then I never saw her again. And, you know, it was like, and that's why I, and I forget, I forget that sometimes. So when I relive those moments from my past, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what Carmilla is for people. And it's so amazing to have that come full circle. 
I'm just imagining like 19 year old you just wandering all over the place, like walking into places, asking if the, there's a queer support group and somebody being like, man, this is a Tim Hortons. <laughs> And I had very short Justin Bieber hair as well, <laughs> just, just to paint the picture. <laughs> well, this is apropos particularly today for me now, but how does it feel to see people dressed like you, especially now with <laughs> Halloween coming up? I don't think anyone's ever dressed up as like me personally. Well, okay, but part, <laughs> pardon me. Laura Carmella is what I mean. Carmella. Um, I was like, what would that cosplay even look like? An this. overpriced vintage t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't even want to know what she spent on her t-shirt yesterday. <laughs> I threw up. <laughs> it's been a, anyway. Just kidding. It's uh, a nice t-shirt. It fits you great. Thank you. So nice. um, it's, it's crazy. I think what's even crazier is people asking us to draw things that they get tattooed on their bodies or like seeing Carmilla related tattoos. Because I was like, that's on you forever. <laughs> um, but it's cool, because like I think I have two of the world's tiniest tattoos now, so I understand now. <laughs> um, but I really, I really do get it. Um, and I think it's such a, a cool thing to, um, I think tattoos are like a, a reclaiming of your body as your own. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really powerful and beautiful thing. And so to see someone that has, that this show has meant so much that they want to get that inked on their person and like reclaim like this is that queer show that made it, this is where everyone gets tattoos. <laughs> this is where, just right above the left knee. Right, right. That's where yours is, right? <laughs> right in the bend. Um, but to be like, this is what, um, yeah, it means so much to me. Not that I'm encouraging everyone to get tattoos, but um, yeah. It's, it's, What's it's, the coolest cool. tattoo, Carmilla can tattoo you've seen? Actually, someone yesterday has a, um, a this is a good sign in like bright red, and it's so dope. It's so cool. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a good one. What about, what about you? You know, it's funny. Yesterday, I did see a few people dressed like me, Natasha, and that was really cool. That was me, Natasha. <laughs> oh, right. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it was. Sorry. <laughs> or was I dressed like you, Dana? Oh. I feel like if I wasn't an actor, I'd, I'd rock some pink hair. Maybe? Yeah. Anyway. I think you should do it. Yeah. Maybe purple. Um, but no, I saw a few people. Um, and it's so funny because I never thought that I had a signature style or, I, and I, you know, but it's it's so funny. Like you don't think about it in yourself, and someone will say, "Oh, describe your style," and I'd be like, "Oh, I don't, I don't know." And then yesterday, I saw a bunch of people like styling the vanless stuff on like camo jackets, and I was like, "Oh, this is really cool." Yeah, yeah. Particularly because I used to get like made fun of and/or shoved into snowbanks for things I'd wear <laughs> when I was in middle school. So it's really funny to like have it come around. <laughs> How did you describe yourself last night? Uh, oh, I'm a soft goth. Soft goth. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. All right. So how can Carmilla fans continue to support you guys throughout your careers, no matter what you're doing next? Well, my Venmo number is... <laughs> 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 kidding. <laughs> Absolutely kidding. Oh, my God. Um, Truly, I think that the way that people can support us is, uh, it sounds so cheesy, but by continuing to support each other. I know that sounds so cheesy, but I think that um, it's really easy to get caught up in th the industry and, um, and it's really nice to be reminded of why we do the things that we do. I truly believe the purpose of art is to shift and change the perspective of perspectives of people and and um, I think if a little web series can have the power to bring people from all over the world together and support each other then that's my job done so and like everyone else's job done um, so continues to support each other mm -hmm. Yeah, I think echoing what Elise said, it's so easy to get caught up in um, 
the negative aspects of the industry sometimes. I mean, a large part of acting that people don't see is the countless auditions you go on and the hours of work you put into memorizing those lines and prepping for your audition and planning what you're wearing and then going out several times a week and getting rejected and not getting the jobs and it's so easy. Like, I've, I've, I've had a bit of a tough year uh, and two years and I, I haven't been getting much work and so it's so easy to be like, oh, maybe I should just give up and then I come to these conventions and I'm reminded from all of you and I'm so grateful like why it is that I do what I do and it's largely what Elise said it's like oh yeah because you can have this incredible positive impact on people's lives by doing what you love and and then it helps lift that sense of ego off of acting it's like oh wait I'm telling stories for other people and it's it's so nice to be reminded of that so yeah I think just like Continuing to get to see all of you in person is, is such a wonderful way to support us. Do you think you would be friends with your characters in real life? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to imagine what like a friend date with Laura would look like. <laughs> um, I think so, yeah. I'd give her a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen, I, yeah, I think I can handle Carmen in slow and both Carm and and Laura in small doses. Yeah. I think they're and like the friends that you see like once every two months, and you're like, this was a nice coffee catch up. I have a friend who's a <laughs> lot like Laura actually, and I do see her often. But then sometimes I have to be like, like once we got a pedicure together recently, and I was like, too much talking. I was like, and too much. And sometimes I have to like <laughs> rein her in. But I have a really diverse group of friends. I don't have one set friend group. And I have just like multiple friends from all walks of life. And they're all so vastly different from each other. And I feel like I have friends who are like both Laura and Carmilla. So yeah, totally. But in, in small doses. I feel like Carmilla would be too wild and free for me. She'd be like a little too cool for me. <laughs> we got some really great questions submitted to us, so I'm going to ask you a couple of those. I'm going to start with Olivia from Montreal. What do you remember about first meeting each other, and were there any first impressions that turned out to not be true at all? Ooh. Nice work, Olivia. <laughs> nice, Olivia. I think we've, we've talked about this a bit before, but I think we put expectations a little bit on the other person uh, that were similar to our respective characters like I think we kind of both um, saw like the qualities that you represent of Carmilla and the qualities that I represent of Laura um, and we were in those roles and in that environment and so I think we both sort of assumed that we were very similar to our characters in a lot of ways in those ways um, and it took it took a while to sort of like break out of that uh, out of that mindset and and see the person beyond the acting work and see the person beyond the character um, and so I think, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, I think one of the biggest things about you is that I realized that you have, like, you're such a softy and, like, such a romantic and such a, and, like, Carm kind of comes across as, like, apathetic and, like, whatever, but, like, you are, like, the biggest nerd romantic. <laughs> um, and I didn't see that right away. Yeah, maybe that's. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I think we we both are similar to our characters in a lot of ways, but we're also three-dimensional human beings who are incredibly multifaceted. And so um, I think we didn't see that right away because a lot of the times when we were interacting, it was for work purposes. And we, you know, even at that time, we were both fairly green actors. So we were both still working out our own acting methods and, and process, at least for camera work, because we both came from theater. And so, and we worked differently. And so I think navigating that was, was really interesting. Um, but then it is really funny how we're also like much more similar than we realized, I think as well. And, and it's really nice to, um, as I, I mean, I, I hate to say the like unlikely animal friendship thing, but I always I always use that because it's like, it's it's so funny to think that um, like I, I see you every week pretty much. Like I probably talk to you a lot. Yeah, we talk to each other so much, and we're like such good friends now. And it was, and I think that was like very unexpected. It was really nice to develop a friendship with you after Carmilla ended. 
Because I feel like a lot of the times, like while we were filming, we saw each other most when we were at work. But then since we haven't filmed in a couple of years, I feel like that's when our friendship kind of went to the next level of friendship. Because we really got to like get to know each other outside of that world. And I think that was really nice. And outside of the pressures. And it's nice that yeah. there was something like an innate connection between us that... Um, made us like want to do that even though it was like challenging and work sometimes mm -hmm. to like communicate with each other and figure each other out it was like our was our charts our astrological charts are like compatible in every single way except for communication <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like frighteningly <laughs> compatible except like a hundred percent in everything yeah. except for so i don't know funny. what that means but natasha's told it's me all communication. about communication <laughs> yeah but yeah, it's so funny. But yeah, and yet there was something like about each other that or like really makes the effort to like be friends, even though we don't have to be. Like it's yeah. just it's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did that Artist's Way program last year too. We yeah. we read this Artist's Way book, so we literally used to meet every week and like have like artist dates where we'd like get together in a park and then yeah. Like talk about in, our feelings. Talk about like our artists. I love you, journey. nerds. Um, <laughs> all right, Garance from France says, Elise. Apparently, you talked about doing stand up in an interview. <laughs> Do you plan up on doing stand up comedy? Is it a hobby? Maybe a professional kind of foray? That's my word. I, she didn't say foray. <laughs> Although she's French, so she may have. Foray? It's pronounced foray. <laughs> foray. Um, I have done it a few times now. I've done it at open mics in Toronto. Um, and it's really fun. I really like it. So um, I just need to do it again. I find the second set a lot more challenging than the first one. Because the first one I was like... Well, I've used up all my good ideas. Um, it's game over for me now. Um, but uh, no, I've written I've written a bunch, and I just need to make it into one cohesive second set. Oh, but yes. Who would show up to see Elise do a comedy <laughs> show? I love that you used your guns, and you were like, "I'm doing this like cute move," but it was like. <laughs> All right, this is Mars the Martian. May I call you Mars? Uh, wants to know, do you ever quote your characters or another character in Carmilla? Like, just kind of like in real life? Like, do you ever have, what? do you ever have like, do you ever quote, like find yourself quoting something from, from the show? <laughs> yeah, I say light and frothy all the time, and that, that's, that came from Carmilla. That's cool. And like, light and frothy, you know, this is, like, this is just light and frothy. What was that swear that Carmilla uh, says to the dean? The, <laughs> that like 10 oh, minute long I, swear? The one I made up. Well, it just said she swears bleep, bleep, bleep in the <laughs> script. And then yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> Are you sure you want me to do this? I was thinking maybe I should just int start introducing that into my everyday language. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, I think I said wench of a woman, and I feel like wench is not a word that's used often enough. It's a good word. Wench. Good word. It's a good word. <laughs> okay, so Brianna from North Carolina. Is there something you know now that you wish you could have applied to your character then? That's a really good question. <laughs> um, Do you need to get out your artist way books? Like, look, yeah. look, look in your journals. Excuse me. We just need to go talk about our feelings for a second before we <laughs> answer this question. Um, oh, you put your mic down, darn it! Oh, <laughs> no. I got it. I was just, oh, I was being yeah, polite. Yeah, no, you go. I was like, stop talking, Natasha. No, you go. Stop talking the stage. Um, yeah, so uh, I had like a really strange accent during season one, and now if I could go back, and then you like see it develop by the time I get to the movie and slowly st sound more American. Um, so yeah, I wish that I, now that I know how to speak a neutral, uh, proper English that Americans understand and don't make fun of me for, I wish that I had given that voice. What are you talking about? <laughs> I now understand how to say bag. Bag. What you, what's the alternate? Ontarians say bag. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, bag. <laughs> bag. Um, yeah, like I wish, bagel. <laughs> I wish I knew, I wish I had my accent that I have now. Yeah. I wish that I would have discovered, um, like, goes on dry antiperspirant. <laughs> You know, that organic <laughs> shit just doesn't work. <laughs> let, let, like, aluminum all the way. <laughs> Poison your body. <laughs> your armpits will thank you. <laughs> will your castmates thank you as well? Is that what you're trying to I, say? Like, I rewatched season, oh, oh, you season got one before. Stains? Episode one or episode two. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a mini lake. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a river that has seeped through my pores. <laughs> Into my shirt in a circular fashion, <laughs> you know. Maybe, maybe, well, like, maybe I just need to like hire a few like Instagram influencers to like bring it back, you, like the, bring back the armpit the sweat. Stain? You know, like I, I feel think like you could, you you maybe, could be maybe maybe I think this is a big enough following life on Instagram journey. that you could make that happen. Because I feel like armpit hair is like sort of like making a comeback, um, yeah. but. Uh, maybe like armpit sweat could also. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can pull a few strings in my in Thank the people so I much, know. Thank you so much, Dana. <laughs> so, you know that I normally do something fun and funky with these these guys. <laughs> oh, but I did not bring any scenes. I did not write any scenes. Um, Carmilla Khan wanted to do something a little different. Okay, I didn't take it personally. <laughs> Natasha and Elise, I have interviewed you many times over the years, and that's great. <laughs> but there are two people that I have been dying to talk to for five years and never have had the chance. Oh my God, what's happening? So I'm wondering, and I'm sure the cream puffs are wondering too, would it be possible to talk to Laura and Carmilla? <laughs> I gotta go find her. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, I've already got the armpit sweat gone. Uh, <laughs> already in character. Fantastic. Well, I'm gonna start with you, Laura. Oh, sh shoot. Sorry, <laughs> 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 just give me like a minute. I gotta get like a little. Laura, Laura Hollis, yes. Yes, pleasure, Dana. To, pleasure to meet you. So lovely to meet you too. <laughs> What's your idea of a perfect romantic date? Well, it would probably take place in a library. Maybe we'd go through the classics first. Um, <laughs> she'd probably read me a, a passage from Pride and Prejudice. Um, and then maybe we'd have some hot cocoa, like, on a blanket, uh, in a park somewhere. And, um, and then we'd fuck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Whoa there, cream puff. <laughs> wow, that was unexpected, Laura. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've grown a lot. Carmilla. Carmilla, you're over 300 years old. But you look amazing. What's your secret? Well, my secret is that I've never had to deal with men. <laughs> they age you, I've heard. So I'm not going to bring up the subject of marriage because I'm worried that Carmilla would rip my face off. But I'm just curious, where would you want to go on a honeymoon, Laura? Well, I'd probably definitely want to go to Paris. Um, I mean, this is a lot of personal information, and I know Carmen doesn't really like me to share this, but we have talked about um, an engagement on top of the Eiffel Tower. 
Um, I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, that's that. <laughs> but that's your engagement, Laura. What about a honeymoon? Like, what about a ho- what about what about a honeymoon? Um, I would go to. Uh, um, Honestly, maybe I'd go back to where it all started in Styria. Beautiful, you know, beautiful go back to the source of where the love started, and um, maybe go on um, a haunted tour of castles, <laughs> just to pique both of our interests. And a um, little champers by the pit. A little champers by the pit. Wh- which pit? Oh, the hell pit. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go to all the sites. Go to where we almost opened the gates of hell. Have some champers. Um, that's that. Would, that would be that. Carm, can I call you Carm? Sure. You and Laura have been cohabitating since before you were even a couple. That's true. Do you have any advice for couples looking to move in together? I mean, honestly, I just let her do whatever she wants. You love those throw pillows. I don't know what you're talking about, Carm. Have you seen, they've, you've seen our apartment. Not a single trace of Carmilla in that apartment. I mean, the designer was brilliant. It was beautiful, beautiful apartment design. Excellent, excellent stuff put in that apartment. Thank you. But do you see an ounce of caramel in that apartment? No. You told me that you had had centuries of designing your own apartments and that you wanted to give me a turn. (laughs) I mean, I could care less where we lived. As long as it's with you, you know? Do you two know that you're what the kids call relationship goals? We... Oh... (laughs) I can't do this. (laughs) Relationship goals. (laughs) How crazy. (laughs) Well, here's here's an easier one. Do you guys have any pet peeves about each other? Mm. Mm. Do I? Mm. (laughs) Yeah, the... um, the, the, The blood supply of dead rats in the freezer don't love... I don't love that. Um, for the blood, for the blood. Um, you go, babe. Mine is really, there's only one. It's the way you put on lotion. <laughs> it's the strangest thing I've ever seen, and I don't know why it bothers me so much. But it's just like, take it out, put it on your hands, rub it. But there's like a whole process, it's a whole ritual. You have to every dab night. and then blot. Okay, I mean. (laughs) What should you do if you suspect someone you love may be undead? Fuck. Well, I highly wouldn't recommend um, tying them up with rope and putting a garlic chain around their neck. It does result in a lot of trust issues that you need to work through for the rest of your relationship. Um, But luckily, we kept the tying up part, so that's good. (laughs) I was waiting for it, and I'm glad I I let the pause happen. All right, enough torture. Thank you guys for doing that. All right, I know you all have a lot of questions. That so. was rusty for me. <laughs> so line up here by the oh microphone in the... Uh... Kaylee, go, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Callie, you go first. Oh, no, I'm screening You're screening, okay. <laughs> hey, um, my name's Sophia. 
Um, so uh, this question stems from the strife between Holstein in season two, where um, I felt like they were miscommunicating because they were speaking different love languages. Mm. And I was wondering if you guys had given um, thought to the love languages that um, your characters are, are um, individually amenable to giving and receiving, and if that has evolved over the course of the series and into the movie. That's a fun question. Mm. Well, my personal love language is the lesser known sixth love language, which is the constant need for validation and attention. <laughs> um, but it's a very common love language. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that words of affirmation? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's a joke, Nathan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but I feel like for Laura, um, I'd say the way that she receives love is probably acts of service, maybe? Um, yeah. No, I, I, but I think that that's how she gives love, too. Like, I think that, like, if um, she's like, I'll go save the world for you, and then you'll know that I love you. Um, which is probably, like, a better way of going about things, but I think acts of service is one of Laura's. I think it's one of Carm's too, yeah, because so she too. did the Batwing bracelet thing. Yeah. You know, she set up the champagne. Like even from yeah. season one, she was always doing like these nice little things yeah. for Laura. That's why I think she receives it that way. Yeah, well. maybe their love languages are really compatible. They might be. Yeah. Um, what's the other one? And physical affection. Yeah, for sure, both of them as well. Yeah, for she is. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Mm -mm. You've talked a lot about how you've grown through seasons one through three and that journey that you've had, but you've also grown a lot after season three ended. I was wondering what piece of advice you'd give to yourself stepping out of season three into the rest of your career. Yeah. So long ago it feels like. Isn't that crazy? It's been... No, it's not. No, not. <laughs> No, oh, that's totally normal. I was looking at you. <laughs> I, like, I was really thinking about it. I was like, I was like how long ago was no, that? Never mind. We did uh, season three in uh, summer 2016. That's wild. Uh, that's just wild. over th three years ago. Yeah. Ah. Uh, um, <laughs> how have we grown? What out? advice? What, what advice would we, we give um, ourselves? Um... Get better at interviews. Uh, <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, I would say uh, one thing that, like, for me personally, I think um, it sounds very, like, not that deep or interesting, but I've learned to be a lot more social. Um, in a lot of ways, I, I feel like I have... Um, uh, I, here's the deeper thing. I feel like I've really, ex uh, I feel as though I have accepted that I need human connection. And that's something that I didn't want to admit for a long time. I was like, I'm fine on my own. I can do this by myself. I'm gonna go be in my apartment by myself. And I think I've learned the beauty of connection and that nobody is immune to that and uh, that um, that reaching out to people is often a lot better than mm. if I'm having a bad day than uh, than being by myself and being like I can I can figure this out on my own. Yeah, maybe just less pride. <laughs> yeah, I think um, for me, I would go back and tell myself that um, I think for the most part, people's intentions are good and I think sometimes part of having OCD or anxiety or that loop of negative thought patterns can be like I'll project my own feelings that I things I dislike about myself onto other people and I'll just like assume the worst or I'll assume that like I used to assume that everyone was sort of like out to get me in a way not not like in a, a really serious debilitating way but just in the sense of like you know I sometimes I'd always think people were mad at me or like, you know, I'd, I'd, or I'd always think that I was like upsetting people. And I think just um, getting better at like managing that is something. And, um, and also being, uh, since season three, I think I, I'm a lot more like body confident now, which is nice. And um, I think like, I wish I could go back 
and not that I am lamenting about this, but if I had to go back, then I'd be like, girl, you look fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Not stress about my body stuff. Oh my God. Yes, uh, Dana Pickley, do you have a question? Yes, I have my own mic, thank you. I love uh, this it's so amazing. much. <laughs> thank you. And there's a binder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I went all out. Thank you. Um, I have a question, obviously, because I'm up here. Um, have you learned anything from Dana, from spending so much time with Dana? I mean, her being an older role model in the queer community? <laughs> this is cute, next level. <laughs> Um, Dana is all, you are so on the ball all the time and I feel like um, I take a long time to answer things and <laughs> go through the, and I feel like you just have, like you walk up on every stage that you are in and just like so yourself, so comfortable, so grounded, so ready to just like come in with like the quippy, like quick response all the time and I so admire just like the ease and the confidence that you have on stage. And I'm like, yeah, I want that. <laughs> I want some of that. Um, and just what a, a huge like support and ally you are for the community. I think that's amazing. And um, you really do lift up everyone else around you. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. I also think Dana's ability to really empathize and really listen is so, beautiful and to ask really detailed questions and she's just so thoughtful with everything she asks both as a friend and as an interviewer and as a journalist. Um, Dana's uh, listened to many of my FaceTime rants over the years and has been such a like wonderful uh, support over things and is just um, always so genuinely caring and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Megan and I'm from Texas. Um, I just wanted to know like how you had said earlier that you guys developed your relationship after the series. Was it hard separating and getting out of character between like all the emotions over like the years in the movies and then like having the opportunity to become friends and then just, was there like still tension or like how as actresses were you able to separate that? like even while we were filming it's pretty easy to separate character and, and personality <laughs> um, because yeah. that's that's sort of your job as an actor is to like um, I think a lot of actors talk about like the process of getting in character but what we don't talk about which I think is equally as important is just to, like how to spring back up out of that um, and so I feel like that was like a natural transition over the years for sure yeah, definitely. Like, when we say that we saw each other as our characters, we don't mean literally. I think it's just, like, we put um, certain qualities our characters had onto... Like, for example, you know, it, maybe I thought Elise herself was more A-type and uptight as Laura is than she actually is in reality. And, and also, and Elise thought I was maybe more apathetic than I am in reality. And those little things, but I don't think we ever saw each other as our characters or, like, had any tension in that way. I think we've always been friends... Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Pepper. <laughs> it's too short for me. <laughs> um, first of all, beg is the proper way to say it. I'm from Seattle. That's how we say it. <laughs> um, so I actually just found Carmilla last December. And so I watched your interviews and seen how you both have grown over time. And I was wondering, how do you think you've helped each other grow? and like kind of how you've noticed the other person grow? Ooh, good question. Um, I would say that, if I go, um, that I really appreciate Natasha's ability to ask for what you want. I think that's really a, like a strength that I've seen you ad like uh, adapt over the years and I think that's really good to, um, to see that. And, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's. I think, that, and that's something I learned from, from you as well and watching you work too, I think. Yeah, like I think it's something we're both 
we both have been learning to do as actors is just asking for what we need to do our jobs. But I think, you know, certain things that you do to prep or, you know, things that you would ask to need or very ask for, um, things that you need over, it was very inspiring over the years. Um, I think it's been really cool to like watch you really live your truth and like really, really come into yourself over the past five years. It's been Ditto. really, really beautiful, yeah. Ditto, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So we, if we ask these two questions super quick, we can both get them in. All right. Hi, my name is Matt. Hi. Um, and I was wondering, because you guys are both members of the queer community, um, I was wondering what it was like to work on a show that was about queer representation rather than like seeking it out. Was that like fulfilling for you guys? Like what did it do for you as people? <laughs> yeah, it was okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, oh man, we have like three minutes, but that um, it, it really, like my coming into my own queerness has been a long, long journey of process, one that I'm still on, and I think that's uh, a big thing that I took away is that coming out isn't uh, like a completed process. Like you walk out of the closet door and you're like, I've arrived and I'm done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That'd be nice. It's like an, an ever-evolving thing and um, in every aspect of your life, I'm constantly coming out every day of, about many things. Um, and so I think uh, like a new sort of like thing that I've come to terms with is lately I'm like, oh man, like not only am I like out, but I'm like, I'm like, oh, I really, I really like am in love with my queerness now. Yeah. I'm like, that's a cool, that's a cool benchmark. I was like, previously I've been like sort of like half apologizing and like not like, and I'm, there's still a lot of like residual shame and everything that I carry around. But for the most part, I'm like, yo, like, that's a part of my personality I really dig. Yeah. I really love that. And so Carmel has been a huge part of that journey. I know, I know, we're like running out of time. I was like, I, I mean, everything you said, like it's, it's, a, it's a process, it's, const it's a constant process. And, and there's no one way to be queer. And so I feel like I go through this constant evolution. Like when I first uh, saw the breakdown for Carmel and I knew that there was, it didn't say that it was a queer show in the breakdown, but I knew the original story and I knew there was that subtext in the original novella. I was so eager to, to finally play a queer character. Um, uh, but I think what I've learned a lot through the show and through the fandom is also just learning more about language and learning more about words and learning more uh, about how to express myself as a, a queer woman. Um, and, and yeah, to like, as you said, like it's just so, it's fluid and it's constantly changing. Like. Sometimes I feel just as much myself as I do in glittery makeup in a pair of stilettos as I do in a pair of biker boots. And I feel like, and I'm a queer woman either way. And both are legitimately, genuinely me too. And yeah, it's been a real nice process. Oh, no. Thank you. To, oh. Thank you. Oh. Oh, wait, wait, Ask the your last question. question. No, it's cool. no. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe we, uh, well, shout Ask it out. Shout it out real quick. Super, super power. Uh, what would you want your superpower to be? Superpower, an unlimited bank account. <laughs> There's a character in Deadpool too whose superpower is just that she's really lucky, and I love that so much because he's like, it's not a superpower, and she's like, oh yes, it is, and like, I, I love that. Thank you, all of you, for your thoughtful questions, and thank the two you, of Dana. you. For so many Thank years you, of Dana. Enjoy us. Give them a standing ovation. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of Carmilla Khan. Okay, bye. <laughs>